A federal judge ruling earlier this week giving AT&T the green light to buy Time Warner could trigger a wave of mega mergers, not just in the media space, but other industries as well. John Petridis of Point View Wealth Management and Sean O'Hara of Pacer ETFs joins us now. Thank you both for joining us this morning. I want to start with you, John, talking about Comcast. In 2015, Comcast tried to buy Time Warner, failed due to regulatory issues. Comcast is now the U.S.'s largest broadband provider. Do you think that Comcast could potentially face the same regulatory hurdles uh, going after 21st Century Fox assets. Well, I think uh, it's interesting because you know, near almost 10 years ago, they bought the NBC Universal assets, and that went through fine. So uh, I think you're seeing a big game game theory being played right here. Uh, Comcast made a 19% increase for the Fox offer. Uh, they made a very strong offer. So you know, there's a no lose situation here for them. They either bid up the price higher for Disney to pay above asking, or they get very high quality assets to add to their portfolio. So, um, I, you know, I, I don't see uh, this deal being blocked either for Disney or for uh, Comcast. Oh, wow. Okay. So let me just switch it over to you, Sean, just in terms of the landscape going forward. Let's play the role of psychic. What do you think the industry is going to look like in just five years from now? Are we going to expect only three to four conglomerates? Well, I think there's going to continue to be mergers and acquisitions. The stock market's at an all-time high here in the U.S. What I love about the Comcast deal is the word cash. Yeah. They made a $65 billion all-cash offer. We love cash and cash flow at Pacer ETFs, and that's what's stunning about that. You're going to see a lot of these things. There's interesting plays everywhere here. You've got the T-Mobile potential uh, combination there, and we think that's sort of driven by the next leg in what needs to happen with go for going from 4G to 5G. And there's lots of ways to play that. You could simply buy the publicly traded real estate that provides the cell phone towers to, to take advantage of that trend. So with the market where it is, with free cash flow levels where they are, and with free cash flow yield where it is, there's going to be continued mergers because the stock market needs to keep on going higher, and this is a way for companies to continue to grow their earnings. There's a secondary benefit in this whole story in that the more merger and acquisition you see, the less shares outstanding there are. And that's a, also a good long-term bull market trend. The same amount of cash is going to continue to, tra to chase the, the smaller and smaller number of shares, and that should help uh, buoy the stock market going forward. Okay, and we're just going to switch gears. We don't have very much time, but I want to talk about the Fed right now, starting with you, John. What did you think about the fact that uh, Jay Powell pretty much hinted at two more hikes this, this year? So what do you think of that pace? Yeah, so uh, we were, you know, the Fed was on board for three hikes for this year. Um, not overly surprised by the comments. Uh, you know, we thought the economy was heading in that trajectory, but a little surprised that he announced it at this meeting, particularly since he said he's going to provide comments at every... Uh, Fed meeting that there is. So I thought they would have allowed a little bit more time given what's going on internationally with trade, potential trade tariffs, given that the uh, EU economy seems to be slowing a bit. So I thought that he would have uh, allowed a little more time for that to come to fruition, but clearly he's laying the groundwork for a potential fourth hike, uh, one in September and then one in December. Okay, and Sean, I want to get you in just before we end. Let's talk about the fact that Jay Powell pretty much played down concerns of low wage growth and even played down trade tariffs in the future. What do you think about that? you think he's being a little too soft? No, I think he's sticking to his mandate. The Fed's mandate is, is what it is. It doesn't have anything to do with tariffs, and I think he's right to stay out of that, that argument. I think there's been moderate wage growth uh, here lately, and I think that will continue. Um, you know, there's more jobs in the U.S. than there are people to fill those jobs, and I think that will help the U.S. worker get higher wages. Great. Wow. Short and sweet. Thank you both for joining me this morning. That thank John you. and Sean, thank you so much. <laughs>